Example 175.5. Consider the data below. 276 people were asked to pick the city they would most like to travel to between Rome, Paris, and London. Is this experiment multinomial in nature? All right, so let's check the properties again. Let's do them one by one. So the properties of the multinomial experiment, the first one is going to be the experiment consists of n identical trials. Yeah, I think that's correct in this problem. We're going to look at exactly 276 people's preferences. So that's a, a specific number of trials or cases that we're going to consider. If you're wondering what it would look like if that wasn't true, it would be something like if I said we're going to survey you know, people until we find 100 of them that say they prefer to go to Rome. If you were to do that, you wouldn't know how long that's going to take. Maybe the first hundred all say they want to go to Rome and you have, you know, your, your experiment finishes. But maybe it takes, you know, 400 before you get 100 of them say they want to go to Rome. So the bottom line is, is that, um, you know, you can't be sure how long it's going to take if I just say, hey, I want to do this experiment until I get a certain number that say a certain response. That would be an example where there isn't a fixed number of trials. But here we know exactly how many times we're going to ask the question. It's going to be 276 times. Okay. Let's look at condition two. Condition two says there are k possible outcomes for each trial or, or three or, you know, in this case, three categories that we're going to put our responses into. So everyone will have to choose among Rome, Paris, London. So there are exactly three categories or three possible outcomes for the question. So when I ask someone which city would you rather visit, they're going to respond to one of three different possible choices. Okay, so we do have k possible outcomes for each trial. In this case, that k is 3. All right, let's go down to their third condition. The third condition is the probabilities of the, in this case, three outcomes denoted by probability of Rome, probability of Paris, probability that they select London, should remain the same from trial to trial, and they should add up to 1. Well, they certainly will add up to one, right? Because, you know, a certain percent of the group is going to say they want to go to Rome, a certain will want to go to Paris, a certain percent will say they want to go to London. And if you're limiting your choices to just those three, if they must pick one, then the probability that somebody picks this one, this one, or this one must always add up to 100%. So that should be clear. Now, as far as the next thing, does the probabilities remain the same? We'll assume so, because this is going to be all done in a short time period, and we'll assume there's a fixed preference out there in people for these three different cities, and we're just kind of trying to discover what that preference is, but certainly those percentages would assume to be constant, at least for a time, you know, maybe not over 10 years, you know, some cities may become more fashionable, fashionable or less fashionable as time goes on, but, you know, for a brief slice or at least a snapshot of a moment in time, you know, we can assume that there's a constant probability that we would have someone say they prefer to go to Rome or Paris or London. All right, case four, the trials are independent. Yeah, I would say the trials are independent because essentially if we survey the people in the proper manner, which would be to you know, either have them fill out a, a questionnaire, which is going to be private, or we ask them privately what they think, then in that case it would be independent because one person's opinion should not be, affect another person's opinion, especially if they're randomly selected individuals. All right, and then finally the last part here, part five. The random variable of interest is the cell counts, and yes, that's exactly what we're talking about. We want to know how many people of this group of 276 are going to say they want to go to Rome, how many people are going to say they want to go to Paris, how many people are going to say they'd like to go to London. So condition five is met as well.